This movie is an excerpt from a longer lesson and you can find out more evidence-based information about childbirth physiology and practice in my blog, podcast, books, courses, mailing list and membership. Please see the links in the description and subscribe to this channel to be notified of new content. So let's take a look at the birth of the placenta. Now this is kind of the blueprint. This is the totally in quotes normal, like a lot of women will have variations of this. So the placental bed, which is where it is attached and it's usually attached in the fundus at the top of the uterus where the muscles fatter and thicker and there's bigger blood supply. As labor progresses, the fundus is getting smaller and smaller and more compact. So really I would say fatter and fatter, I guess, rather than smaller and smaller and it's condensing. And particularly during the emergence phase, because there's often not the amniotic fluid there, um, creating mass for the uterus to contract around, the fluid's gone. And you can see how the placenta is getting squished down behind the baby. So the whole package, baby, placenta and cord, all move down together. There isn't this space behind the baby, which is often depicted in diagrams of birth. So immediately after birth, the placenta is still functioning. So the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide is still happening in the intervillous space. The placenta is still attached. There is often an interruption in the contraction pattern. So a space and time for the mother to gather herself, gather up her baby and explore her baby. The placenta transfers the baby's blood into their circulation because during pregnancy, a third of the baby's blood was circulating through the placenta. Now that blood is needed to perfuse the lungs. So I always kind of think about it as an exchange of oxygenation. Of course, there's other things happening in terms of nutrients, but of oxygenation through the placenta, which is acting as lungs. And after birth, the placenta hands over that function to the lungs. Baby's transition is much more complex than that. And as I've said, I might actually do a lesson on that. But for this lesson, we are focusing on the placenta. So long story short, the placenta hands over its job to the baby's lungs and it begins to shut down. It's not functioning anymore as an interface between mother and baby. Now, when the umbilical cord meets the air, it causes the jelly that's surrounding the umbilical cord. That's called Wharton's jelly, probably again after a man, but let's just call it the the jelly that's covering the cord to actually expand, which clamps off the blood vessels. Cold and stimulation of the cord, you know, the mother picking the baby up, the baby's feet kicking it, the kind of tension and the tugging also contribute to that shift and change in the surrounding jelly. The uterus is now much smaller because the baby's not inside either. And the placental site, so that's the bit that the placenta stuck onto has reduced and the retraction of the uterine muscle fibers constrict the blood vessels supplying the placenta, preventing blood from draining back through the maternal vascular tree. So that's the mother's blood vessels that feed the placenta. And this congestion results in the blood vessels rupturing and the villi shearing off the uterine wall. So we often see what we call a separation bleed as that happens. So this is oxytocin making this happen. So it's oxytocin that's created from the mother and the baby interacting with each other that causes this, these contractions that help to separate the placenta. A clot forms behind the placenta. So there is a bit of bleeding from those blood vessels as they shear off and the blood and blood clot form behind the placenta, which creates some further weight right in the center of the placenta and it encourages it to move downwards. And the non-elastic placenta can't hold on anymore to that placental site as it shrinks and contracts and it peels away and it usually stops from the middle aided by that blood clot that's kind of adding some gravity and some weight into it. And again, it is the mother and baby interaction and subsequent release of oxytocin that creates the contractions necessary to then clamp down on all of those sheared off blood vessels and stop them from bleeding. As the placenta moves out of the uterus and into the vagina, the woman may or may not feel an urge to push. So I'm gonna to link to an article about women's experiences of birthing their placenta because their descriptions are brilliant. And you know we need to understand what the experience of anything is in order to understand it holistically 
not just the physiology. Now, immediately after the placenta is separated, the mother's coagulation system increases, so it kind of kicks up and it clots form in those torn blood vessels and the placental site is rapidly covered by a fibrin mesh. So it's already started healing, stopping the bleeding and recovering from the birth. And once the placenta is birthed, the uterus contracts down again, thanks to mother and baby interactions and oxytocin. And the placental site is not the size of a dinner plate as often it's referred to. As you can see, the whole site shrinks and the walls of the uterus kind of press together, compressing the blood vessels even further. So it ends up a lot smaller, a much smaller site, because it's a bit like a balloon that's blown up. And then when it's deflated, it's a smaller surface area. 